Costco is a great company, but it isn't one that I'm personally investing into right now. I'm going to explain why. As always, we will do a deep dive. We'll run through the historical performance of Costco Wholesale. We'll look at their top line revenue growth. We'll look at their bottom line net income over the last few years. We'll also analyze how strong their balance sheet is, a quick health check, total cash versus total debt. And we'll also compare their performance over the last five years against some of their competitors. We'll also look at their dividend safety and really drill down into some financial metrics. We'll also talk about a lot of insider selling that has happened over the last few weeks. And we'll look to the institutions to see whether or not they are buying shares quarter on quarter or whether they are now starting to sell. And we'll also run them through the valuation model, getting to our intrinsic value getting to our acceptable buy price given our investor margin of safety and we'll look to Wall Street to see what they're forecasting over the next 12 months. So let's start off with the historical performance. Now over the last year they are up 46%. Over the last 10 years if you've been holding this company you'd be up 618%. Do bear in mind this doesn't include those dividends reinvested and they are currently trading towards the upper end of that 52 week high with a yield of 0.56% and a forward P of 46. Now when we take a look at their top line revenue growth what we like to see 3 to 7% growth year on year. 153 billion reported in September 2019 very strong in their latest annual report. 242 million so what's also nice and not just the growth over the last five years but on a more granular level we do see those increases year on year which is always very strong as part of our financial metrics we'll also take a look at the last 10 years percentage wise bottom line 3.7 billion reported net income 6.3 billion reported in september 23 and again similar to the top line very similar fashion constant increases year on year so both top line and bottom line have been increasing year on year over the last five years with no inconsistencies quick health check then total cash versus total debt 9.4 billion reported in september 2019 cash and short-term investments latest quarterly report 17.9 billion so they now hold roughly double the amount of cash than they did just five years ago now comparing that to their total debt numerically and directionally we can see it has increased from 7.2 billion to 9.3 billion so even though we note that the total debt has increased it is very small in comparison to their total cash so they could pay that off in one day if they needed quick look then versus some other consumer staples we have walmart we have target dollar tree dollar general over the last year this includes those dividends reinvested we see that costco has been the best performer outperforming by 47 percent when we extend that to the last five years we see costco again the best performing up 261 percent but again always bear in mind that past performance isn't an indicator of the future nonetheless a very impressive performance now inside of buying inside of selling we've run it through the screener to look for buys and sells at least 100 shares over the last two months and we can see there has been a lot of insider selling notably by the executive vice president as well as a few different directors and the principal accounting officer insider buying we see none of that we do typically say that it's very bullish given the fact that management do buy for one reason they believe the share price will go up insider selling on the other hand is for a number of reasons personal and financial and what we can note for the majority of these sales, as we can see here by the green percentages, in fact, the share price has gone up since they sold. So just interesting to note. And for those that are interested to find out other companies that have had insider buys and sells, that is one of our latest newsletter articles, completely free. If you do want to grab a copy of these weekly newsletters, click on the pinned comment below. We've literally just released the latest article discussing share buybacks and running through companies that do a ton of share buybacks very aggressively. Now, in terms of institutional ownership, this sits at 66%. Total sales over the last 12 months, 36.6 billion by these institutions. And in fact, for the first time in a long time on this channel, institutions have been buying less than they have been selling. So what we can see here, institutions on the whole over the last 12 months have sold more of Costco stock than they have bought. Notably, Q2, they sold a large tranche, 29 billion worth 
Although we do know since then in Q3 and the latest quarter Q4, they have done more buying. Anyway, as we always say, please do your own due diligence, never copy the institutions, but it is quite interesting in my personal view to note that for the first time since I can remember on this channel, institutions have been selling more of this stock than they have been buying. So let's jump into the financial metrics. Now, dividend safety score 99, very safe. Market cap 321 billion, it is a mega cap company. Now, recessionary metrics, so comparative data, the last recession, they in fact increased the dividend 0709. They had above average growth, negative 1.5% versus the S&P's negative 12. And they also outperformed the S&P negative 38 to the S&P 500's negative 55. Dividend growth, lots to love here. Double digit increase in April last year. So we are expecting an increase in a few months. Over the last five years, double digit. Over the last 10 years, again, very, very strong. And for those that don't know, Costco do also special payouts. In fact, if I remember correctly, they did pay a special dividend of $15 per share last year, which is typical that they do every few years. They've also been increasing the dividend for the last 19 years. In terms of dividend yield theory, then it states a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average. We have a sign here, a double sign, in fact, of overvaluation, 0.57 versus the five-year average of 0.77, and the forward PE, 45 versus the five-year average of 35.4. And in actual fact, this is probably the highest forward PE that Costco has had over the last five years. And when we compare this to the consumer staples of 19.1, Costco sits much, much higher. In terms of the free cash flow payout, for regular viewers, you know we ignore earnings. The data is still here if you want to see it, but it is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. One quick example, 2016, if we look at the earnings, 32%. You'd be happy with that as an investor who looks at earnings data. As someone who looks at the free cash flow, well, what this signifies that in 2016, management paid out more in dividends than they generated in free cash flow. It is a one-off and a while ago, so nothing to really point out. 2023, the free cash flow, 25%. 2024, expected more of the same. So no real negative red flags here. Free cash flow per share, 454 in 2014. Nice to note the increase in 2023 at 1520. It is increasing over the longer period. Granted, there are a lot of inconsistencies, but nice to see 2024 expected to go higher to $17.20. Sales growth, we want to see steady moderate growth as a baseline minimum of 3 to 7%. We pretty much see that nearly every single year. 2023, the latest year, 7% is fairly positive. Total sales then numerically, they have more than doubled their top line. 113 billion in 2014, 242 in 2023. Now, shares outstanding. What we love to see here is when companies do a lot of share buybacks. And if you want to read more on that, do sign up to our free weekly newsletter. We just dropped a shares buyback letter just a few minutes ago. What we see here is they've actually increased, diluted your position over the longer term, but really only by 2 million shares. Nothing really to note here. In terms of ROIC, one of my seven golden dividend metrics, I want to see 10% or more as the minimum baseline side. The reason for this, it gives me faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital if it is higher. And we can pretty much see not only is it consistently higher, but it has been increasing over the last 10 years, 23% looking strong in 2023. So we arrive at one of the first issues that I have with Costco. Now it is their margins, both on the operating and the free cash flow, but mainly on the operating margin side, we can see it is well below the 12% we like to see. 4% in 2023. Now, because they've consistently been doing this and they have been reporting a strong net income, strong profits year on year, it isn't a worry. But if we get to a point where the consumer starts to get squeezed or even more squeezed, the US or other countries that have already fallen into a recession fall into a recession. We start to see consumers looking to buy cheaper alternatives, maybe cheaper supermarket alternatives. And this could be where companies like Costco start to reduce their operating margins to entice the customers back. And that will have a massive effect on their bottom line. Nonetheless, it isn't a massive worry purely given the fact that consistently over the last 10 years, it has been fairly low and they have been completely fine. Just something to consider. Net debt to EBITDA earnings before interest tax depreciation amortization. Remember, correlates to the dividend safety as well as the balance sheet strength. Effectively, as we mentioned, it wouldn't even take them in 2023 one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. 
So that was a lot of strong metrics and now let's jump into the valuation and as always if you enjoy the content values being provided smash that like button hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now typically on the channel we do run through every single one of these models getting to the intrinsic value. For Costco the only intrinsic value that I see relevant is the discounted cash flow valuation and for that we essentially got the free cash flows year on year. Average growth rate 66.5%, very strong. Forward looking, we've gone a little bit lower than analyst expectations at that 14%. In conjunction with the discount rate at 8%, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by shares outstanding, and we can see we have our signal of overvaluation. Now, this is essentially the intrinsic value coming to $671, and we can note that the essential current price is around $720. So what we typically start off with is a margin of safety of 10%, and we only use this if we believe it meets the company. In fact, three criteria, wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward-looking data. You could argue that that is Costco. So at 10%, you would be looking at $604. A lot of people will say that with Costco, in fact, you could go at a much lower due to the fact that it is more of a premium, it never trades at a discount, that is still around $640. Right now, that is a long way away off the current trading price. Now, whilst we did run through the metrics, it is a very strong company. Yes, I do have some reservations about the operating margin, but that isn't something that would stop me from buying this high quality company. The issue that I see right now is the valuation. We saw that the forward PE is trading significantly higher than not only the industry, but also the five-year average. This is a company that has been on a tremendous run, but one that I see as extremely overvalued. And now the share price may continue to increase. It may not fall back for some time, but me personally, I am being patient and waiting to add this only if it comes into the right price for me. In terms of Wall Street, well, they see the price target over the next 12 months pretty much bang on the current trading price they see 0% upside over the next 12 months. As always though, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Maybe Costco is one that you don't agree with. Maybe it is one that you are dollar cost averaging in every day. Or maybe you are also waiting for it to before you buy and continue this in your portfolio. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You can also grab a copy of the valuation model to get to the intrinsic value, as well as the acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio and on your watch list by clicking below. As always, have a great day. See you on the next one. And for now, take care.